so I just finished my series of R videos, uh, and I'm coming back to give you one more. Uh, this one in particular is about a package that I have written, uh, and uh, hopefully you might find useful. It's called VTable, and the purpose of this package is to help you look at your data uh, while you are working with it. One of the things that uh, R does not do quite as well as some other packages is make it easy for you to tell what sorts of variables you have, what the names of them are, uh, what, the, what those, you know, if the variables have any labels, how to look at those labels. Uh, and then Vtable makes a whole, that a whole lot easier. Now, because it is a brand new package, it's not yet in the in CRAN, which is where you get most of the packages that you can install with it install.packages. Uh, instead, it's just up on GitHub. Uh, so first of all, if you want to check it out on GitHub uh, and you know look at the code and everything like that, you can totally do that. But for now, uh, if you just want to install it and use it, you need the dev tools package, which you can uh, load in dev tools. You can install GitHub, you can install the, the package from there. Uh, using this code right here, right? So it's just install underscore GitHub, uh, and you go to my uh, account name slash the package name, Vtable. Then you can load in Vtable. Now I've already got it loaded up right here. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you how to use it. So uh, it's pretty simple. Really, all you have to do is just toss some data in there and it will give you some information. So let's load in some data. Let's just get in some, some standard uh, R data. That's, uh, and let's say Vtable, life cycle saving. That's the name of the data set. And it will pop up immediately some documentation for that data set, right? So it's got the name of the data set right here, right? Lifecycle savings. Uh, it tells me how many rows and columns there are in the data. It tells me the names of all the variables in the data, what type of variable they are, uh, and the, the range of values that it takes. Uh, so in this case, right, so the, the SR variable is at, is the, the minimum value of it is 0.6, the maximum value of it is 21.1. Uh, it'll also show me the values of the different factors. So if, for example, uh, I uh, add in a factor uh, variable here. So let's just take uh, life cycle savings uh, country. So the row names on this data set happen to be the country names that are uh, for the observation. So let's just bring that into the data itself. Uh, and if we do that again, V table again, it should uh, show, okay, so we got a character variable. Uh, so it's not showing me the things, but if I bring it in as a factor variable instead, it's gonna show me some different levels. It's not gonna show them all to me because that would be really uh, uh, a whole lot to show. We can have it show, uh, does, we can adjust how many of these we want it to show. So for example, I can do factor or um, factor limit. Uh, I can have it show all of them by just setting that to zero. There's no limit. And it'll show every single country name that's in there. Or if I just want it to be at a different limit, I can tell it how many I want it to show. It'll just show three of them right there. So that's the basics of it. There are a bunch of other stuff, the other things that we can do. Uh, so for example, one thing that R does not do super well is value is variable labels, like little descriptions of what the variables actually are, right? SR, POP15, what do these actually mean? Uh, you know, you might want to look at that over and over again. So uh, let's let's create a labels vector. And I'm just going to make it up right here. Uh, so let's say we got uh, A, B, C, D, and E. And ideally, these would actually be uh, ways of describing the data. So I can just say, uh, OK, labels. Oh, wait, now we got six variables. So I need six labels. say labels equals labels, right? the actual label variable that I have. And so now it will actually label the variables for me. Uh, so I could bring in the description of what SR actually is, what POP15 actually is, and so on and so forth. There's multiple ways to use labels. So you can do it like I did where you have a vector uh, and you just have you know each description is a, an element in that vector. That can get a little bit cumbersome if you've got a lot of variables and maybe not all of them have values. Uh, so there are two other ways to do uh, labels. So one is to have a two column matrix uh, or data frame. So let's say lab two uh, and let's have that be um, a data frame. Let's do it that way. And the first uh, column of that data frame, doesn't matter what it's called, but I'm just going to have it be the names of Right? It's just going to be the names of the variables. And then the second column, that is going to be the actual labels itself. And if I do this, it'll give me the exact same result. Uh, but the nice thing about this is that this does not require 
that uh, all of the variables have labels. So for example, I can just have this just, just be, uh, let's say, SR and DDPI, and we'll just label those A and B. And so you can see it doesn't require that I have every single one in there. That's the second way to do it. The third way to do it is to have a, a data frame that has the same variable names as uh, uh, as the actual data frame that we're, that we're labeling, but the first row has the labels in it. So let's do lab three. Let's have that be a data frame. And let's say that SR is equal to, the, the label for that is A, and DDPI, the label for that is B. So if I do that, the exact same result, right? Nothing changed. So there's three different ways to do labels. Uh, or you can have a data set that already has labels in it, and it will automatically pick them up. So let's bring in uh, the SJ labeled package and let's uh, bring in some data from there the EFC data set now the EFC data set already has variable labels and value labels in it uh, and so if we just do V table EFC I don't have to specify the labels because it already knows what the labels are it'll pick those up it also work with value labels as long as you have the SJ labeled package loaded it can it can recognize and use value labels uh, and so these these are numeric uh, variables that have uh, you know, uh, character labels on them. So this is the actual data in here is a one, two, three, four, five. It's not like a factor variable, but it knows, okay, a one means spouse partner and so on. Uh, for that to work, you have to have the SJ labeled package loaded as well. Uh, there are of course other things that we can adjust uh, with the V table. Uh, so uh, let's, um, let's go ahead and give our data a description and a title. Let's go back to life cycle savings. And let's say that our data title is uh, life cycle savings data. And our description uh, is going to be, um, this is data on life cycle savings over a decade. Okay, and then it will up here, give a little bit more description of what's going on. Uh, you can actually get rid of this part where it tells you the rows and columns if you want. Just put the, the last four characters of the description to be omit and then it'll take that out. Um, now of course we're having this all go to show up on the viewer pane. It doesn't have to. Uh, if, first of all if you're if you're running Vtable not in our studio it won't open it in the viewer pane. It will open it in the web browser. Uh, we can open it directly in the web browser so I can just I can the out option will tell me where to send it. If I say out browser it will load up in the uh, browser. There we go. And uh, I can also uh, have it just spit back out the code to me in R. That one's probably not super useful. I can also save it. I can say file equals uh, lifecycle documentation, and it will just save the HTML file to my working directory just like that. There are other bells and whistles. You can change the column widths. Uh, you can do a number of other things, but th that's the main way that you can use uh, Vtable. Uh, and it's very handy because as I've, if you watch my other videos, you know that I'm always a big proponent of looking at the data over and over and over again. Um, and this will make it a lot easier to do so. And in fact, one other thing that you can do, one other option that I think is important to talk about um, is uh, the sum option. I can have it include summary statistics in uh, in here. And the way that you can do this is that you just have a vector of summary statistics that you want it to have. Uh, and you just tell it what functions you want it to run, uh, followed by an X. So I can say mean X, and that'll report the mean of the variable right right there. Uh, this is very flexible. It, I, did, I didn't make a list of like approved functions or anything like that. Really, anything that you want to do um, I can take the mean of the log of x squared if for some weird reason I wanted to do that and it will work just fine. Uh, there are two special functions that this allows that I've created. Uh, one is uh, count na and the other is prop na for uh, count of, of, non of missing observations and proportion of missing observations and it will tell you how many missing observations there are in your data which is a good thing to know. In this particular data there's no missing observations uh, but if I do that for vtable or for uh, efc Right, you can see that some of the variables do indeed have some missings right there. All right, um, that is about it. Thank you very much. Check out the package. Let me know if you find any bugs or have any suggestions for it. Thank you. Have a good one.